Hi everyone, my name is Naresh Agarwal. I'm an associate professor at the School of Library and Information Science at uh, Simmons College. I'm doing this paper in collaboration with uh, Dr. Lela Maruf from uh, Kuwait University. And the title of uh, the talk today is uh, Quantitative and Qualitative Instruments for Knowledge Man Management Readiness Assessment in Universities. So the, we both couldn't be here uh, in person for the conference and uh, that is why I'm presenting this talk on behalf of both uh, Lela and me. So as you can see, uh, there are two words in the title, uh, quantitative and qualitative, and these two words are also in the title of this uh, QQML conference. So what we're doing is that we are presenting uh, two instruments, uh, a survey instrument, a quantitative survey instrument and a qualitative uh, set of interview questions uh, to assess uh, knowledge management readiness in universities. So let's look at what we mean by these terms. Now what happens is that in any organization, uh, most of the knowledge that walks into the door uh, at uh, 9 a.m. or whatever time the organization opens, uh, that knowledge walks out of the door uh, by 5 p.m. And a lot of times when you, people leave the organization, um, that knowledge is lost with them and there's not really a, a good flow of knowledge or good continuity that, that happens uh, from people to people. And also a lot of times new employees uh, or even uh, employees later on, they feel isolated and uh, not so much a part of the organization, especially where they have to where they develop a culture of hoarding knowledge uh, in order to uh, to simply survive or to do well in the organization. So knowledge management is this process and really it's a set of uh, processes and creating a culture in an organization where people feel free to ask other people when they do not know. It has been defined as the systematic process of capturing, creating, structuring, disseminating and, and applying all forms of knowledge throughout an organization in order to fulfill one or more organizational objectives. And these objectives can be that to work faster, to reuse best practices, and to reduce costly rework from project to project. Uh, Kimis Dalkir in her book defines knowledge management as the deliberate and systematic coordination of an organization's people, technology, processes, and organizational structure in order to add value through reuse and innovation. This is achieved through the promotion of creating, sharing, and applying knowledge, as well as through the feeding of valuable lessons learned and best practices into corporate memory in order to foster continued organizational learning. Now what has happened is that uh, in the in the last uh, few decades, uh, especially since the 90s, knowledge management has been adopted by a large number of organizations. Some have uh, some successfully and some not so successfully. Uh, but uh, the nonprofit sector and especially uh, universities and these have been very slow the, to adopt knowledge management. While there have been um, some studies in knowledge management, especially in uh, in the Middle East and some in Thailand and and uh, China and and some in the U.S., uh, they have not been at, at the same level and the same scale has, as it has been in other for-profit uh, organizations. So Leila and I, uh, in 2014, we published um, a paper, and uh, this was in. Uh, the International Journal of Knowledge Content Development and Technology. It's an open access journal, and you can find this paper online. The title of the paper is uh, Initiating Knowledge Management in Colleges and Universities, a template. So what we sought to do in this paper is that we came up with a 10-step process whereby uh, any college or university could follow this as a template and go about the process of uh, initiating or implementing knowledge management in that university. And it could also be extended and applied in other contexts such as libraries and archives or any other type of organizations apart from uh, universities. So they have, um, so in this 10-step uh, process, uh, this is, uh, this model kind of sums up those 10 steps over here. And these steps are divided into the four phases of planning, designing, implementing, and scaling up. So at the in the ver in the very center of this is value proposition. That is, why do you want to implement knowledge management uh, in the first place? And in a university setting, these can be the things like for improving uh, faculty productivity, or to retain uh, the more students, uh, retain or attract more students, or to to increase the prestige um, and reputation of the university, or to or to be more profitable. So all of, any of those could could be the value proposition as to why do you want to implement knowledge management in the first place. So then uh, once you once you're clear about your goal, then you decide on on the, on planning the, the 
the, the process over here. So the first step in this is uh, finding a champion, that is uh, finding some person in, in the higher management uh, who would support uh, this process of, uh, of implementing knowledge management and then form a knowledge management uh, planning team. And, and the second step here is uh, identifying the, the goals and priorities. Uh, and so identifying what is the perceived crisis uh, that the university is facing or what is the opportunity out there and then aligning the, the knowledge management goals with that of the university or the department goals. And then identifying and prioritizing the critical knowledge that you need to manage. So all of those things happen in this, uh, in this step of identifying goals and priorities. Now once that is there and done, in this third step of determining your current state, you need to find out uh, what happens, uh, to what extent is knowledge management uh, and, and KM practices already there in the university and uh, what are the priority areas. So for that, uh, we recommend in this paper as uh, doing surveys and interviews and focus groups and uh, and finding out that uh, what is uh, what is the state of uh, knowledge management, especially with regards to areas like, uh, like people, culture, technology, and so on. And uh, and this is what we what we mean by the readiness assessment that is assessing how ready the university is to to implement knowledge management and depending on on the degree of readiness different approaches would be, would be suitable and then determining uh, the next step is determining the approach uh, or the tools to use for knowledge management and then you develop uh, appropriate measures uh, for it create a plan of action and then in the third stage uh, you launch a pilot you provide support uh, you capture the success stories, publicize early results, and then finally, once this is done, then you scale scale up the initiative to uh, to other units or departments in the university, and then you realign your strategy accordingly as well. So there are uh, some things which which implement uh, some enabling factors which implement this process. Uh, things like culture, uh, infrastructure, technology, and measures. So this was the overarching uh, framework that we have come up with over there. And the focus of this particular study was in uh, step three of this 10-step process, which is uh, determining your current state. So even though the surveys and interviews uh, were recommended for determining your current state, there was not much detail in our 10-step in our uh, process paper on, on what, that, uh, what those surveys or instruments, uh, survey instruments could look like. So then what we did was that we designed uh, we designed a survey for this uh, readiness assessment and instrument and we also the, tested it empirically by sending it out to um, LIS faculty members in uh, in universities across uh, North America and that study actually the, has been accepted uh, for publication in the Journal of Information and Knowledge Management and it will be coming out in September 2016 so the full paper on that instrument uh, and the study will be there in this uh, journal. So really, when you talk about readiness assessment, it's really looking at uh, what is the current state uh, of, of the current state of, of knowledge management, management readiness in the university setting. So the research question uh, that we have uh, for this study is that how can KM readiness be assessed in a university context using both quantitative and uh, qualitative methods? And uh, the reason we came up with this question is because uh, while there are a number of KM readiness assessment uh, instruments, it is not clear the, how these instruments would look like in the context of uh, colleges and universities and especially when you are surveying uh, faculty members. So this was uh, an overarching research model that we have for the study and what we saw was that there are two sets of factors uh, which would impact uh, the KM readiness. One is uh, individual factors and the other is organizational factors. So here, when we, when we talk of individual, we're talking about the individual faculty member. And the number of factors that we have here are, uh, are, are, are a few things. One is uh, trust. And by trust, uh, what we mean is that what is the level of uh, trust that faculty members uh, have uh, for each other? So here, the trust is a belief in the good intent, competence, and reliability of employees with respect to contributing and reusing knowledge. And then what the second one that we have is uh, self-efficacy or knowledge self-efficacy, which is a, a person's belief and self-judgment about possessing the knowledge and the capability to share with others. That is, if people feel that they lack useful knowledge, they may decline from sharing as they believe that their contribution cannot make a positive impact uh, to the organization. 
And then uh, in, in the third uh, construct which we have is perceived degree of collegiality. And uh, we, d we define this as uh, cooperating and collaborating respectfully uh, with colleagues. We define openness to change as openness to experience, willingness to support change, and a positive emotion towards change. And openness to changes that are being proposed in, and implemented in an organization is a necessary initial condition for successful planned change. And finally, reciprocity is defined uh, as the level of anticipated uh, reciprocity. That is, to what extent does a person sharing knowledge expect uh, to receive in return? So people would want to share knowledge because they expect future help from others in lieu of their contributions. So th all of these were um, the factors that we that we had for individual factors which would affect uh, the individual readiness to participate in a knowledge management initiative in the university. And apart from this, there are there'd be various organizational factors as, as well, and the extent to which um, there is a, a prevailing knowledge sharing culture existing in the organization, and the extent to which the organization um, is decentralized. So decentralized organizations are more adaptive, more innovative, and more capable to deal with complex environments than uh, centralized organizations. And then uh, the, the level to which you have organizational support, uh, which might include the overall infrastructure, cultural values, hum human resource practices, and leadership. And all of these have been found to influence knowledge exploration and management practices. And then uh, the top management support, that is the support of uh, the president, provost, administra administrative officers, deans, program chairs, etc., on the KM initiative. And uh, then finally, the, the technology and the the, the the ICT infrastructure existing in the, in the university, which would be crucial for KM readiness. So both these set of individual and organizational factors would affect uh, an individual's perception of uh, the, the university's readiness to participate in a KM university. It came in initiative and finally the, this in, in turn would affect uh, the, percep the perceived organizational readiness to adopt uh, knowledge management in the university. So what we've done in the study is that for this first set uh, of factors uh, we have proposed a survey instrument for the individual factors and the future work here would, here would, would involve coming up with, um, with uh, interview questions to have a more mixed methods or a qualitative way of gathering data as well. And for the second set of uh, factors, organizational factors, we've come up with uh, interview questions, qualitative interview questions. And here the future work would involve coming up with uh, survey questions. So the idea is that we, we wanted to demonstrate both uh, a, a quantitative as well as a qualitative way of gathering data and leaving some work uh, for the future. And this uh, quantitative survey has already been tested empirically. So here in, in the first part uh, for the individual factors is the survey instrument. And this survey instrument uh, has questions for each of these factors for trust, self-efficacy, a perceived degree of collegiality, openness for change, reciprocity, as well as the this mediating variable and the dependent variable. So for trust, we have questions like, uh, I believe uh, colleagues in my college or university are knowledgeable and competent in the area. I believe colleagues in my, in my college or university share the best knowledge that they have. And I believe that colleagues in my in my university give credit for others' knowledge where it is due, that decide the source of the knowledge they receive appropriately, and that I believe in the good intent of colleagues in my college or university with respect uh, to reusing knowledge. And similarly, we have questions for self-efficacy. For, for instance, I'm confident in my ability to provide knowledge that others in my university consider valuable. We have questions for degree of collegiality, like that the colleagues in my college and university demonstrate respect towards each other, support each other, and uh, they negotiate respectfully with each other. We have questions for openness for change. I'm open to novel experiences and ideas. I enjoy new experiences. I'm willing to support change in my college university. I'm enthusiastic when changes are proposed in my college university. And then there are questions on uh, reciprocity that when I provide an answer to a colleague's question in my college or university, I believe somebody will provide an answer to a question I might have. And then there are questions on individual readiness. I will share my knowledge with more colleagues in my college or university. I will always provide my knowledge at the request of colleagues in my college or university. And then there are questions on the perceived uh, organizational readiness to adopt KM. That is, I believe that my university is prepared for effective KM, and I believe that my university is ready to adopt uh, KM. So all of these questions, uh, as you can see, we have come up with uh, about three to five questions for 
each of these constructs and these questions have been adapted from prior prior studies where possible and self-developed uh, when needed and this uh, this entire set of question and, um, and the whole study uh, can be found in this uh, journal of knowledge and uh, information and knowledge management in the in, in volume 15 uh, number 3 in September 2016 so for the second part which is looking at uh, the organizational factors that is looking at uh, the, the, the trying to measure these uh, knowledge sharing culture decentralized structure and so on all of these as well as uh, these two variables using a qualitative way we have come up with these interview questions so here uh, on knowledge sharing culture we have how would you describe knowledge sharing culture within your university what sorts of processes do you use to what extent do you think your university has a knowledge sharing culture on decentralized structure we have how would you describe the organizational structure in your university do you have a more powerful central administration or more autonomy in individual schools or units? Organizational support. What kind of organizational support do you have for knowledge management initiatives in, in your university? For example, time, resources, money, budget, facilities, etc. How support is the, supportive is the top management for new initiatives? And uh, what sort of ICT infrastructure do you have in, in your university? What technologies, uh, both hardware and software, do you use for work and communication with each other? What faculty support mechanisms are in place? And if you want a new tool or technology implemented, how easy or difficult is it? For individual readiness, uh, will you share your knowledge uh, with anyone in, in university if it is helpful to the person or to, or to the university? And finally, on the organizational readiness, do you believe that your university is ready to implement KM? Are you, ready to, are you likely to see KM implemented in the near future? Why or why not? If not, what are, the, what are the barriers that need to be crossed before knowledge management can be adopted? And do you have anything else to add? So these were just an examples of uh, sets of questions uh, and more questions could be added in the actual uh, interview when these are carried out. So the, what we have done briefly is uh, presented uh, these two the sets of instruments um, for you to the, to have an idea about how KM can be can be measured and studied. Uh, KM readiness can be measured in a university setting and the survey instrument uh, and the interview protocol could be used by other researchers to carry out uh, mixed method studies to assess individual came readiness in universities and future work will involve uh, coming up with a survey instrument for the organizational part and an interview protocol for the individual factors and then combining the instruments for both sets of factors so if you have any questions or comments uh, please feel free to contact either Leila or me uh, that's my email address on top um, agarwal at simmons.edu and that's uh, Leila's email address here so thank you so much and uh, and thank you for listening and I hope you have a good rest of the conference. Thank you.